This is a 2008 Shelby GT500. We are International Dyno Authority. This is a signature edition. So when you open the hood, each step along the way was done by a mechanic and then signed mm -hmm. off by Carol Shelby. And then that step was done and another step was signed off by Carol Shelby. So underneath the hood, you get to see that signature and you get to see the special signature edition of a car like this. GT500 back in 2008 was rated at 500 crank horsepower, supercharged, 5.4 liter under the hood. We're about to see what this can do and then improve on it. Walt is gonna walk through the steps of this and make this a fire breathing GT500. Okay, when you're testing a car like this, especially in the summer months, you want to make sure that all the systems are functioning that are maintaining the temperature. This one has an extra system, which is a coolant tank and a pump that goes through the supercharger. So we pulled this lid off and we had a look. Does this actually circulate? And the best tool you can use for anything right here, it's a quick little temperature gun. Put it on the outside and check and see what the temperature is. I'm at 136 degrees, it was at 145, and when we turned it on, it wasn't circulating. So while it went inside, made a couple of changes, it started circling, you can see it swirling, it brought it up to 180 degrees. So now we know, as it's circulating through, it's pulling the heat out, and it's maintaining the temperature in the supercharger. It can't make any power if it gets hot. If it's just getting hotter and hotter, it'll just make less power. So we're being sure, safe, careful, but also making sure that this can make all the power that it will by the end of today. When I do the math on this, I basically take what the crank horsepower was in 2008, which is 500, divided by 1.15, give you 435 horsepower. It's about 100 horse shy, it's a hot day, and the circulator wasn't working at the beginning. We did have one pass at the very beginning when it was cooler, it made 345 horsepower. It's about 100 horse below where it should be at the wheels. We're gonna work on that. We're gonna fix the fueling. We're gonna take away all the bad habits that it's learned since 2008. And while he's gonna get the fueling correct, the timing correct, and the boost curve correct, we're gonna get this thing running the way it should. On this channel we talk about fuel and we talk about fueling an awful lot. So when a customer comes in, most of the time they're not up to date on all the terminology that we use. So when I say it doesn't have any fuel, the customer's like, I just filled the tank. What we're talking about is electronically we need to adjust the fuel system and the amount of fuel that is being delivered to the fuel injector, how long the fuel injector stays open so that we can change the outcome of how much fuel is being delivered during a combustion cycle. Now that sounds like it might be a bunch of mumbo jumbo. Basically we need to give the engine a bit more fuel so that it makes more power. Some vehicles come in here that have way too much fuel so we have to take fuel out to give them more power. We're always getting the correct amount of fuel into the combustion chamber to match with the air so that it makes the most power it can but safely. No doubt about it, in 2008, this was the top of the heap as far as horsepower goes. 500 crank horsepower, 
supercharged from the factory by Ford out of a GT500. There was very little on the street back then that could come anywhere near those kind of boastful numbers. When it came in, it definitely didn't make those kind of boastful numbers. It was down quite a bit, but the main cure was fairly obvious. Wally had to go through, pull the data and look and see, there just wasn't enough fuel being delivered. The fuel curve was wrong. So he fixed the fuel curve and then he started to do what he always does, which is refine the tune. Make sure everything is correct. Make sure that you match the ignition timing so that you don't have any chance of coming up against knock or detonation. And then walk your way through the tune until it is correct. Came in with 330 foot-pounds, 345 horse. Was running fine, but you could hear as he went through the pass. It was pretty boring, pretty dull. Now, when he goes through the passes, this thing takes off. It's going to be a whole bunch extra for the driver, the owner of this car, to actually make his way through the gears and enjoy himself. This is where it should have been when it was done the tune. Should have come in just over 410, 420 horse, and now we're at 468. That's just a normal gain. When things are so far out of whack, you get a lot more gains than what you actually are advertising, and that's nice. So every once in a while we see that in one of these cars. This was nice, went from 345 to 468 horse. That's where this car should be. That's where this kind of car deserves to be. The horsepower on this is gonna be pretty hard to contain under the little bit of rubber that's in the back now.